everyone, right, we've got a fault unknown here, or relatively unknown. Not, let's see, MacBook started to play strange noises when the sound was on. Originally thought it was due to bad right speaker. Took to Apple, they thought the same, decided to send it for speaker replacement. During the procedure, however, they discovered that there was liquid damage to the motherboard. Alright, so we've got liquid damage. Fantastic. Not what we want. I guess we'll see. We're not going to bother putting any power under this. We'll just straight up disassemble it and go from there. It's not really a good idea to put power into these things when you know there's liquid damage. Uh, here's hoping it is not a eaten through the logic board type liquid damage. I've been getting a few of those lately. And sometimes you can save them with a great big excavation, taking out all the layers. And if you're lucky, you get enough operation going in the machine that you can get the data off and then basically it's the end of the life of the machine not really a sensible thing to continue using the machines after they've been liquid damaged like that i mean it might work for today it might work for tomorrow it might work for a month but chances are it will find the inappropriate time to fail on you if there is liquid damage in here it's Non-visible. <laughs> That's about the best way I can put it. Right, it's uh, nothing specifically showing up immediately. Let's have a look if there's any... Let's have a look if there's any tide marks. There's a little bit of spluttering under here, but we don't really have a lot. My guess is what they're calling liquid damage is going to be surface corrosion. I can't see any marks in here that would lead me to think it's liquid still. So the mystery is still on. It could be a speck of food or something, maybe. Honestly, this looks very clean, so I'm kind of surprised by the diagnosis. We may find it yet. I'm not sure if Apple uses microscopes in their genius bars or not. Okay, found it straight. <laughs> All right, yeah, okay, there's liquid damage there. That is uh, a bug. Uh, like a bug has gotten in there and done the damage there. So that's fine, we can actually just remove and replace that. Normally we don't, but that's uh, one of those funny sort of coincidences in life where you put things down, straight away you see it. I definitely wasn't aiming for that. Usually you try to have a little bit of a lead up or warm up for finding the true fault. And then that kind of thing happens and you're like, well, I guess I can't... Uh, lie about that one now. We're still going to check all the other areas because if there's one bug bit of damage then there could be more bug damage. It's a little bit unfair in my opinion that these boards in terms of insurance get classified then as liquid damage kind of blaming the person for spilling something on it but in reality it was just a bug getting in there. Yeah, The person didn't actually spill anything on it. It's going to protect these caps. They have a notorious habit of popping. They don't take kindly to shock heat loads. Yeah, when you come into the hot air like this, because you haven't preheated the board according to uh, official methods, then it does have this tendency to shock the components a little bit too much, and those particular caps really throw a tantrum. You can always smell it when that happens. Actually, I should take those two caps off while I'm at it. Okay, well, well, that's been burning there for quite a bit. We didn't get to save those caps. Unfortunately, they did fly off a little more aggressively than I was anticipating. I probably should just grab one at a time rather than both. So we can see the damage up here. This is why I do like to take the parts off without using flux if I can because then at least you can initially see what the damage was before you come in and start cleaning it up again it's one of those small things type situations where you want to just have a look see what got truly damaged versus what kind of mess you've just made Okay, so overall the pads for the actual amp controller are okay, but that one capacitor pad has well and truly gone. So we'll just have a look at what that capacitor does, and it's probably like a 100 nanofarad, just general stabilizing 
type cap. We'll have a look at what that does and then we'll make an assessment whether we need to put it back or whether we have to, well, whether we can just leave it alone. I'm very, I am a little bit concerned about how deep that has gone down because that has started to eat through into the veer. And the reason why that's a concern is because you don't know if it's started to encroach on other inner layers. So there's definitely no way we're going to get that veer back. Even though that little piece of copper is there, it's, it's just a surface piece. It's of no good at all. Yeah, we'll have a look at the board view and schematic and see what it can tell us. All right, so this is a 2100 board. And we are on down here rotate it so it looks like what we've got in the image now let's see it's this pad here that has dropped dead speaker amp d booten mm, that actually gives me a little bit of a concern all right and this is why it gives me a concern because it's not just a general filtering cap this looks like it is part of an internal um boosting or something like that it's it's definitely a, a critical component so we are going to have to find a way to reattach it to where it wants to go now that's going to be fun because okay we might be able to get to this r7703 and back to these two pins let's have a look problem we have is that the pin that's corroded is this one here so we actually don't have any other option the only thing we can do is try and run a trace from here, like rebuild it, to bring it down to here. That's that's our only hope. We're going to need to do... Uh, it's a bit of a tricky bugger too. Um, it's got to go from here to here. So we actually have to cross over this one. They're kind of like, not ideal, but it's not terrible. In this particular case, because it's not a true, true liquid damage, I am going to be willing to rebuild this for a general use situation. Typically with liquid damage, you repair to get the data and then you walk away. In a data recovery situation, we're done. We're basically, we've pulled that part off. That's it, we're walking away now. All right, let's build ourselves a wire that goes from there to there. Very small wire, which funnily enough, actually makes it more difficult. Now we've got to work out how we're gonna engineer this in. Mechanically tack it down and then I can run the wires like to the correct endpoints. Oh my goodness. So I want to do that. Put a little dob of cure on that, like UV cure or something, and then we'll roll up what we need. I will say this new UV cure stuff is brilliant. It doesn't look pretty, but what matters here is functionality and this excels at it. Yeah, look at that, that's fantastic. Huh, interesting. Didn't realize it was actually kind of neatly folded up like that. Okay, I'll probably botch this up now. That is actually probably more than enough for what I've got to do. Yeah, I've messed that up now. All right, I might be able to leave it like that. It's a very small amount, but it might be enough. Okay, I can see that's flowed in. I'll get the second one on there as well. Okay, so that's down good enough now. And we need another one of those chips though. Ideally, I like where that trace is right now. I like the fact that it's just off the edge, which means it's not going to interfere with the ball trying to sit down properly, but it is enough to be soldered there. So hopefully that works out and it's far away enough from these ones that it shouldn't influence anything. I don't have one of these boards for parts, so I'll just see if we can find it using a part search. See what other boards might have them. I do have the 2536, so I've got a couple of those. Pretty sure that's it there. We'll, we'll check the broken one to the one on the board visually. Right, so this is the one on our donor board. 
This is the one we extracted. Uh, let's see, SN 12776 BO, and yeah, they're a match. You could almost reuse that directly as it is. That is a very clean extraction, but we are going to reball it. It really doesn't matter that there's some dimples on that chip because when we reball it, the paste will just compensate. Okay. Those balls are going to be a little bit wonky. We just need to reflow it a bit and they'll bring it all back into center. Here we are back at the original. Stick down a little bit of flux. That is way too much flux, or chip will float away. I think the biggest problem might be this ridge here. We'll have to see if we can actually set it down without knocking into that ridge. Yeah, the ridge is a problem. Yeah, I think my mistake here has been that I didn't push that wire down enough. Yeah, we've destroyed that. All right, we're gonna have to do it again. Oh well, better to do it right and botch it up and ruin the machine. I am aware that there is a very close contact going on down there uh, between this trace, but hopefully we should be good. I don't think I can get it much lower than that. So we'll cover that over again, but this time with a substantially smaller amount. <laughs> Just realize I gotta clean the flux. Damn it, always forgetting things today. Next issue here is I've unfortunately spread some of that UV cure over the pads, which we don't want. Alright, hopefully we can work with that. Let's cure it. Just to be sure I'm gonna scratch top some of those pads. I think now we, we can try put that one down. It's kind of scary. We were ready for this 15 minutes ago and then we stuffed up. There's a little bit of lift going on on that side, but it's okay, it's within margin. Now we do want to make sure that we do not have an unwanted crossover. It's basically, yeah, we don't want this. It doesn't appear to be any contact, that's good. Okay, that's good, that's what we want. It's not the prettiest, I'll definitely grant you that, but it is functional and it is safe. Let's see if it even works. Okay, 20 volts, good stuff. We've just got a bong, good enough for logo, so it looks like we've got a win. Good to go. So, another successful one.